Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert, and today we're going to be analyzing the behavior and body language of James and Jennifer Crumbly during their police interview. James and Jennifer Crumbly are the parents of Ethan Crumbly, otherwise known as the Oxford School Shooter. The video we're going to be watching today is from November 30th, 2021. This is the same day as the Oxford School Shooting. Before we get started with this analysis, a couple of quick things. One, this is not a psychological evaluation of any kind. These are just my opinions. In addition to that, I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, let's go. So the audio and video are not great on this. This is from the trial, so the angle is a little bit weird. I'm going to do what I can to clean up the audio, but I'll tell you what they're saying if you can't hear it. Let's just jump right in and see what we see as far as behavior and body language. I understand that he wasn't involved in a school shooting. He was the one who did everything. He said he acted alone. So basically, the only thing we've asked him so far. So basically, Detective Sergeant Bryan is saying that Ethan acted alone, that he was engaged in a school shooting. So at this point, the parents know very well that a school shooting has happened. Now, I want you to look at the body position of both of them. James Crumbly, he looks a little bit more anxious. His shoulders are slumped. His hands are together. He's leaning forward. He looks like he's in distress. But if you look at Jennifer Crumbly, she's sitting back. She's got her body open. Her legs are crossed. She's sitting upright. She looks very casual in all of this, and that's what's so striking about this is that having just heard very recently that their son has been involved in a school shooting, she looks remarkably calm. So once again, if you compare the postures of James Crumbly and Jennifer Crumbly, they're very different. James Crumbly seems to be a lot more anxious. He's needing water because his mouth is dry. He seems to be a lot more stressed out by this. Jennifer Crumbly is running her fingers through her hair. Sometimes we ventilate when we're feeling anxious or stressed. We try to get, let the heat off of our head a little bit. So she's doing a little bit of that. But otherwise, seems that she's very composed right now. So look at how far away she is sitting from the table. Now, oftentimes when we are trying to be engaged with people. We sit close, we lean forward. She is physically distancing herself from that officer as much as possible. I mean, she really could almost literally not be any further back than she is right now. She even scooted back a little bit further when he said they're going to talk about it more when his partner comes in. Once again, I know this is hard to hear, but watch her body language right here. Watch her scoot back. Um, this is my partner. back. And while it was subtle, you could see she physically moved herself back. She's creating as much distance from herself from the police as possible. I'm kind of fascinated by the police's willingness to tolerate her being on her phone. She picked up her phone. She's texting while they're talking. Maybe at this stage, that's not such a big deal. We'll, we'll keep watching. <coughs> you on a, uh, a test um, for a practice test. Do you think we should probably have a lawyer? That's up to you. I, I think we probably should have a lawyer. I think we can, I think we can speak I know. to the cops and we'll be here. And here's our perspective right now. This thing is still very, very fresh. Right. All right. People are still on their way to the hospital and it's such. So she's asking for an attorney or she's asking her husband if they should get an attorney. And as you can hear the police officer saying, that this is still very fresh, this is still very recent, and it's remarkable how composed she is. I think for those of us that are parents, if you could even imagine your child having been through that or knowing that your child's going to spend the rest of their life in prison or the fact that they hurt other people or whatever it is, it, she is remarkably composed. need to know what his state of mind is. Did he, did he 
Is there explosive devices anywhere? Is there other guns anywhere? Do you hide guns, ammunition, explosive we, devices? Are there any other victims? We need to know these things quite rapidly. I so the officer is saying, or detective, I should say, I believe he's a detective, but he's essentially saying that we need to know more information. Could other children be in danger? And it's just really tragic that Jennifer Crumbly at this point is asking about an attorney rather than saying, what can we do to help? It's how can we protect ourselves? I, okay. I was in town. I saw all you guys go to care about. When I see five, I start crying. Concerned. So look at the juxtaposition of body language. You're going to see this a lot throughout, so I'm going to be pointing out more aspects of this. But it's really strange to see Jennifer Crumbly just texting throughout this police interview. It's remarkable, really. And I guess they're focused on James Crum Crumbly right now, so they're not so worried about her texting. But James Crumbly seems a bit more engaged, but also seems to have some shame. He's looking down. His body's hunched over. We tend to do that when we lack confidence or when we're feeling ashamed about something. So he may feel shame about this situation. But Jennifer Crumbly seems fairly unfazed by this. It just doesn't seem like that big of a deal to her based on her body language. No, but it was to me. Oh. And as you can see, James Crumbly is playing with his beard. Obviously, that's something to soothe oneself. As I talk about oftentimes, when people are trying to soothe themselves because they have lots of stress, they try to stimulate nerves, whether it's in the chin, the lips, the face. Nothing unusual about what he's doing right now. What did he say? I mean, he just he said he was sorry. He's sorry. He just said, you know, like, did he have an issue? Like, he that down? No. Or, no. Well, not, that, not that we know of. He, his, his best friend. And as you can see with James Crumbly right now, as he's talking, he's talking with his hands below the table. Oftentimes, this signifies somebody not really wanting to be totally forthcoming or feeling shame about what they're talking about. He's not showing body language in a way that people can really see it. And that's oftentimes unconscious, but it's very consistent with people who don't want to be seen. No, well, he, his best friend, his parents just sent him somewhere to Wisconsin. No, oh, no, the counselor, the, the, the counselor said, you know, there's no. I didn't even, I honestly didn't even like think about that. I mean, it's Ethan, like Ethan's like, a, he's a perfect kid. Like he doesn't, he doesn't do anything. He doesn't get in trouble at school. He doesn't like, he, Is that how? Oh. As you're going we'll, we'll, we'll so as you can see, she's putting her hand on her forehead, trying to show her frustration. As they're talking about Ethan being a good kid in school, she's visibly frustrated. She's letting out a big sigh so everybody can hear. School, he doesn't quite Is that out? Oh. As you're going we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go. Um, that's going to be all up to you guys. But this is age, we would like. I'm not going to handy right now. Okay. Hey, Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Can Andy handle it and it can get me from them. we would we would like a, a, a lawyer present for your English from here on out okay and then there's no disrespect you guys here that's okay it's just it, we don't your, I, I don't want to have on this one i only see this stuff on tv that's cool i only know that i called from the counselor about that okay. it's so unfortunate once again Everybody's got a right to an attorney, but when the police are saying we want to make sure that there could not be anything else happening right now, the, the parents are unwilling or saying that they don't want to speak further without an attorney present. Once again, it's everybody's right to, but given what's happened, given how pressing this situation is, and given that they're not entirely sure that it's over or that there couldn't be an explosive somewhere or something like that, it's just really unfortunate to me that that's the priority right now. He talked to me and we went down there and that's it. No, no, it was about. And he didn't seem worried about it. And he let Ethan grow up and stay at school, or he could go home. And I really wish we would take him home. home. Her demeanor really is not proportional with what's happening. And what I mean by that is she seems inconvenienced. She seems like her son got a detention, or maybe somebody got suspended. She's not engaging in a way that would suggest the seriousness of this situation. Is this, or is that, 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 or is that,
you better not have to go to either jail or the military for a short time. So you're seeing obvious signs of distress from James Crumbly right now. Now, Detective Sergeant Brian just said that Ethan's going to be going to jail. It's it's hard to hear, but it's basically talking about what's going to happen to him next. James Crumbly obviously reacting strongly to that. We oftentimes rub our forehead when we're in extreme distress. Jennifer Crumbly doesn't have any visible reaction. <laughs> Any medical conditions, any mental conditions we need to be aware of? He's got to get anxiety or tough maybe or something you can get out Does he have any meds or anything like that that you have at home that you might need to bring through? No meds, no. Give me one minute to the form. I'll be right back. And then she's back on her phone immediately again once the detective sergeant gets up. It's just, it seems like she's got things to type or things to say. R- really interesting behavior from somebody who's in the midst of such an unspeakable tragedy. As the detective is talking about something about people being hurt or people that have died, once again, it's really hard to hear. I haven't been able to find any higher quality video. Once again, just no reaction from Jennifer Crumbly. And I know I keep repeating this, but I think it stands out when people don't have reactions to certain situations. It seems that she's been more interested in typing on her phone than anything else. Now, I know a couple of times she was showing the officers something on her phone, but right now it looks like she's typing. As far as I can tell, she's not trying to find things for the officers. As you can see right here, she's continuing to scroll through her phone. There's been several minutes where she's basically just looking around on her phone. I'm not really sure what she's looking for, but she's just on her phone, not really engaging with anybody and remaining looking at things and typing. I mean, she's on her phone even getting up, even standing up to go somewhere else. It's just remarkable how disengaged she seems from all of this. And maybe that's intentional. Maybe it's because she wants an attorney there. So she's doing that as a way to show that she's not willing to engage. Or maybe she's emotionally disengaged from it. But it really does stand out the amount of time she has spent on her phone. Now, you'll notice with both of the parents, they have a bit of a different body position here as well. You'll see that James Crumbly has his hands interlocked like he's bracing himself, but his legs are wide open. Whereas Jennifer Crumbly, she has her hands between her legs. Now, we oftentimes see that as a loss of confidence. This is the first time that she's shown that because thus far, she's seemed very confident, disengaged for the most part. Hi, love. I'm with you, Hi, Connor. Blue, grayish. Hair color. Brown, brown. Okay, so we were asked you all those questions about why you did this, and you're all satisfied your parents want to retain and train, so we're not be asking you any questions about the incident that you were involved in. Your parents popped in here to focus some basic information. Uh, you will have a contact with them eventually. 
And now you see her body position change. Now you see a more defensive stance. She's crossing her arms. Now, it's not always defensive when people are crossing their arms. Sometimes people just do it for comfort. But given the fact that that's not how she was sitting earlier, she was sitting with her arms open, it's noticeable that her body posture is different now. And she's crossing her legs. She's essentially closing herself off at this point. Um, we'll be taking you to either Oakland County Jail or Children's Village for a clip, get you live after we take all your clothes and everything else you have on you. Any questions for me? You can also see that her body posture is now leaning back. Once again, I mentioned this earlier, but when we lean back, that's a way to create distance. So, in, and in essence, she really is creating distance with everybody in the room at this point as she leans back. Good, man. It's up to you. I don't think we need to stay here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now you'll notice that Jennifer Crumbly notices that she's on camera. And then she turns around to ask why. So these aren't necessarily related, but it is interesting that she didn't confront him or say anything to him until she literally saw that she was on camera. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. All right, let's go ahead and stop here. Hopefully this is helping you better understand some of the body language we're seeing from James and Jennifer Crumbly. James seemed somewhat more upset by this. He seemed to be more affected by it. At times it appeared that he may have had shame or that his confidence was rocked by what was going on. Whereas Jennifer Crumbly, generally speaking, seemed disengaged. She was on her phone a lot. She was showing detectives some pictures or some things from her phone. But generally speaking, it looked like she was just on her phone. She also was keeping distance between them. She seemed almost indifferent to the situation going on around her at times. I'm sure it's hard to envision how any of us would react in a situation like this. But to think about the future of her son and the lives of the children that were lost, it's unbelievable to think that this is the extent of the reaction to that situation. Hopefully this helps you better understand some of what we observed today. If there's other aspects of this trial that you want me to take a look at, please let me know in the comments below. Last thing before we get finished up is I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, thanks for watching.